I am absolutely fascinated the most with this glyph structure vine because it's so dimensional, multi-dimensional. And uh, so that tree, part of a tree, broken part of a tree, has been woven in with these vines. Here's the top of this tree. It's got a very hairy looking top. <laughs> See this little thing down here? I'm like, huh, I wonder if that's a portal. And then I think, huh, put your feet in there. Maybe it's just a portal. It's a portal just for feet. Oh, little Zakeda found his resting place here. There's another part of the other. No. I'm so wrong. I'm absolutely wrong. These are roots. I thought this was the top of the tree. No. This is a root system. That's what's so crazy cool about it. It's the roots. All this hairy looking stuff is the roots. How, how did this tree get pulled up by its roots and then wound in? See, here's the broken end of it right here. Oh my God. Like every time I come here, I have to stop. So here's where the one vine, two vine, they're in the same shape, these round shapes. This is where they come together and then I think maybe this is a portal for my arms. So I'm just going to put my arms through here. Look at that. What uh, what happened to me in these woods yesterday Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, God, you guys. So I came in here. I was feeling, like, sad. I was feeling sad. And uh, I found a heart sh or a teardrop-shaped rock in the path. Picked it up. And, you know, I come into these woods thinking I'm going to communicate with some spirit of the woods, you know, some kind of nature spirit, some fairies, some Bigfoot. That's not what happened yesterday. All along, Sonny's been talking to me about everything is within, go within, go within. Well, I am the consciousness within this body. It didn't occur to me that my body had its own awareness and you know come to think of it I remember reading about how scientists have found brain matter in different organs of the body including the heart and my body <laughs> had some things to say to me and I and it was just like mind speak telepathy that I have experienced with the Bigfoot and she wasn't too happy with me and it's not like she was mad at me but she was expressing sadness okay she was expressing sadness that I had bought into all this religious programming, right? And I had 
a lot of judgments about my body, a lot of judgments about how gross it is and how evil it is and how it wants totally different things than what I wanted, including the, the sexual shame. The sexual shame. And I mean, I have been celibate for years. My last relationship was six years ago. And uh, I'm not a bad looking girl. <laughs> I, get, I get a lot of guys all the time with a lot of offers. And I mean, mostly it's younger guys. And I mean, like really young guys uh, just out of their teens. And I'm like, God, I'm not a predator. You know, there's no way I'm going to hang out with, with these guys or do things with them or any of that. And in the meantime, I have had spiritually transformative experiences that include spontaneous orgasms. And I have had this tremendous, immense sexual energy just coursing through my body and wanting to express itself and every time there's an opportunity literally every time you know for for quite a while i have shut it down refused turn these guys away and especially recently the the quality of these guys has dramatically improved dramatically improved they're not um trying to talk to me sexually or ask me for booby pics and all this other shit that they've done in the past um and i'm and i'm talking to a lot of these guys on the phone a lot of them just want to talk about you know the bigfoot and spirituality in fact that's what they all want to talk about that's what we're talking about and um so I find it interesting that now that this Bigfoot is my, in my life, I'm finally able to accept myself. And, and it's not even myself. It's accept this body the way she is. Accept her words and her feelings and, and what she wants and her needs and her desires without judgment and repulsion and all these things that probably, you know, most definitely come from religious programming and childhood sexual abuse, you know, and then growing up into an adult woman and acting out sexually from a place of, of woundedness that even you know, compounded and cemented in that shame and repulsion and disgust. And I, if, uh, if you ever get involved with nature spirits or Bigfoot or angels or any of these kind of higher dimensional, higher frequency beings, I mean, they're here to help us. They're here to help us, to elevate us, and lift us up and heal all of these parts of us that are down in these lower frequencies. And sexuality was the last thing I thought I would need healing from, honestly, like I, cause, because I never thought about it. I never thought about it. I pushed all of these memories away and all of the feelings and the urges. I'm really good at self-control, y'all. I'm very good at self-control. And I just was like, no, nah, you know, this is because I am uh, a, uh, what do you call those? One of those monogamous people. I'm waiting for the right guy <laughs> kind of thing, you know, which I am. I still am, even after knowing that I'm not going to go to hell for expressing and, and meeting those sexual needs. I'm not going to go to hell. I know this. But I'm still not on a dating app today looking for a penis to service it. 